Welcome to the Nerds Off Podcast, where two lazy nerds talk about whatever we got the energy for. My name's Chris. I'm Joseph. And you were just at a convention for a couple days. Yeah. And I don't know anything about it because uh, we, we haven't really touched base that much since. So let me know all about I want to know all about this thing that you were just doing without yeah. me. Dur- during convention weekends, I am usually out of touch with everybody. Like, I don't really look at my phone that much. I'm just kind of experiencing the whole process. And rarely will I even take photos or anything. This is more like a, I don't know, I'm more of like, it's more like a me thing at conventions where it's like, I don't need to post pictures as proof of me being there or whatever. It's like, I know I'm there and I'm feeling it and I'm feeling the vibe. And it's- You're giving the most hipster response, like (laughs) kind of- it, it's funny because it sounds hipster, but also really anti-hipster at the same time. Yeah, it's like a very neutral kind of hipster thing. Um, yeah, you're just like, yeah, I go to these conventions, but I don't need to prove that I go to these conventions. <laughs> I don't I don't take photos when I get there. I'm not like everybody else. <laughs> yeah, I'm like I'm like the worst influencer so ever. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, uh, no, oh, I, man. but that, so it's a Texas Frightmare Weekend, which is my favorite convention to go to, um, yeah. which is obviously about horror and horror things. And it'll just have various uh, guests there and panels and just a general good vibe of people like horror conventions for anybody who doesn't know or for anybody who is concerned about going to them because they think it's going to be like a weird, I don't know, experience like People are friendlier at horror conventions than any comic convention I've ever been to. I just want to say that. Like horror fans are the friendliest people you'll ever meet in contrast to the the subject matter. Um, yeah. Yeah. So everyone's there and we're all in it together and there's rarely any kind of like scuffles or anything. So it's just like we're all there vibing with the horror um just everything horror aesthetic everybody's dressed up like people be dressed up with like i don't know machete stabbed at their head i saw a really cool one yesterday where it was like uh basically every combination of the thing like the creature from the thing uh, he had the dog head sticking out of his chest he had like a weird like warped face if you think about the end of the movie it's close to like uh, wilford brimley's like transformation Um, Oh, cool. Yeah. Like it was just a walking version of that. I actually took a photo of that. So I'll show you later. But that was really cool. And it's just like everybody's there and enjoying themselves. It's horror, but it's fun. Yeah. I got to see a lot of friends I don't see that often who were there from out of town and bought some new movies and such. So yeah, overall, just a really great experience. Went to a couple of parties, went to one the first night, which is just the basic party. And then on Saturday night, Last night went to um, a karaoke party. That was a lot of fun. And did you just, sing? I didn't. I mean, there is no way. Oh. Like, like that. That stuff fills up so fast. Like the list. Okay. So uh, even if I wanted Wait. to, yeah. I was gonna, if you were if you were gonna sing karaoke, what song would you choose? You know, it would depend on how warmed up I was. I guess because okay, <laughs> it, 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 if I how warmed up or how liquored up. Well, or, do, or it, is there it, a difference? <laughs> well, Right. I guess it would depend on either or um, because okay. it, like uh, if I've got time to like warm up my voice a little bit, then I can hit some higher notes. But if I don't, then I've got to stick with low tones. So um, if if I had time to warm up, I would probably sing uh, the What's Going On by Four Non Blondes just because that song's so fun and everybody nice. can join in on it. But if I didn't have time to warm up, I'd probably just hit like a Johnny Cash number or something. Okay. Th- yeah. That's a respectable one for sure. Now, when you say four non blondes like that one, are you going to sing it the way they do it? Or are you going to sing it the way like the He Man video on <laughs> YouTube? Because that's become my default way of singing it at this point. <laughs> like in my head, that that's the that's the real song now. You know? Yeah. Yeah. You know what? I think that would actually be the way to go because if I'm around a lot of nerdy people, then that's the one they're, they're going to respect most. Yeah. And then you got to do like all the parts where <laughs> yeah, like, like with Beast also. Man and Skeletor, like, <laughs> and he tries. Yeah. <laughs> uh, oh my God, he tries. <laughs> right. So, yeah. Had I time to warm up, then that would be the okay. go to there. I've done karaoke once before, but that was just amongst friends, not really in a public setting. But and what's what really cool about, um, I did multiple ones. I'll have to think about oh, it. Okay. But 
Okay. If if we what's cool about the environment of just karaoke in general, I guess, usually is that everyone's so supportive. Like even if the person is not good, but they're having fun, that's what matters. You know, that right. then everybody's cheering you on at the end. So you feel like a rock star, even if you're obviously not, you know? And that's yeah. kind of like what I have to go in reminding myself of is like, I know I'm not good, but I know everybody's still going to be supportive. And there's something really nice about that. I feel like I would, I, because I'm a very um, unconfident person. So <laughs> I feel like I would have to go for the most talk singing <laughs> song sing I could some get. cake. I'd got to, yeah, I'd have to do cake or I'd have to do like, or just do a William um, Shatner cover of anything. Yeah, I was thinking the William Shatner thing, or maybe um, I, no, I, I'd probably go a little bit less sad than that. Like either Cake <laughs> or like Cage the Elephant. Okay, like one of those two. Um, but yeah, I think I think something like that. But um, yeah, I've never so, done it. I've never done karaoke. I've I've only like just me and my wife being goofy mm-hmm. and like you know together, but not like dude. You know, oh bar. man. I've got a good thing for us to do someday. Then next time we're oh, together, no. either whether it be oh, no. here or where you are, we have to go to a karaoke bar. It doesn't have to be with anybody we know. It can just be the two of okay. us. But let's go and let's do it and just feel good about ourselves being bad. Okay. Yeah. Uh, all right. Let's do it. Yeah. Okay. We'll Challenge it. accepted. Should we? Should we do a song together? Oh yeah. Well, what, yes. Now, yeah. now we have to. Um, and now we have to, and we got to figure out what song it's going to be too. <laughs> I was saying my first thought was taking back Sunday since they are a duo. <laughs> that's okay. That's yeah, we're doing it. That's both. I think that's in our wheelhouse. We could, but, we could totally do it. You know what? We could really do the uh, freaking four non blonde song. Honestly, the, the He-Man version and we could just play different parts. Oh, that would be super fun. Yeah, yeah. So we'll, we'll, we'll workshop it. We'll figure it out before we get there. I, I did find, and we can move on past this because we're going to talk about karaoke <laughs> stuff forever, which is yeah. weird because I've never done it and we're going to continue on this train forever. But in just, um, you know, goofing around with Rochelle in our living room doing karaoke, just us two, I have found that as a uh, voice actor, the most fun one to do is This is Halloween from Nightmare Before Christmas and trying to do all the voices. It is so fun. I absolutely would recommend doing that. If, if we ever did one around Halloween, I would totally do that one. You know, what? what's funny is, and maybe it's just because like, you know, it's Nightmare Before Christmas and that's just really some people's touchstones for yeah. um, things they watched as a kid. Like, should I and I do the same thing? Like, maybe it's just yeah, our generation kind of great. thing. <laughs> yeah. So fun. Uh one thing, I, I, so I want to move on real quick, but I wanted to ask yeah. you because I know you've been playing this game. Um, did you build a robot with a raging boner yet in Tears of the Kingdom? <laughs> I know that's a prerequisite for playing the game yeah. or beating the final boss or whatever, since I've seen so many videos of people doing that same thing. Yeah, but, I think I've sent you a few videos of that. <laughs> yeah, oh, maybe that's why I've seen so many of them. Yeah, yeah, because I, I think that's all I send you is that's just every true. time I see one, I'm like, I got to send this. That's what Tears of the Kingdom is for me. It's like, oh, yeah. okay. Because uh, the Tears of the flame. Kingdom are the tears of the developers is what right. it is. Like, They're knowing, ashamed of the users. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> knowing like the what they've wrought. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's 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 awful. Um, no, I haven't. Like, you know what? I've played maybe an hour of that game, which That's in the grand it. scheme of things okay. is is nothing. I don't think I've even on, off the tutorial island yet because wow. I just haven't had time to jump into it. Sure, the game a game that I can talk more about, and I won't talk too much about it, but is uh, Jedi Survivor, which I've yeah. had a great time with. I don't know if I've mentioned it on previous episodes at all. Because I might have just started it at that point, but I yeah. I beat that now and really enjoyed it. I played through Jedi Master because that one felt the most like fair difficult without being like w- without the enemies being like damage sponges, which is just annoying. Like like that kind of difficulty is like uh, and not making it more difficult. It's just making it more difficult to want to finish the game if the enemy is a damage sponge. Because then it's like, well, I'm doing the same stuff. It's just taking me longer to do. Like that's not that's kind of false difficulty, but. I don't know that the game actually does that on its highest difficulty, but some games do. So I just wanted to mention that. But Jedi Survivor, 
great game. Really enjoyed it. Liked it better than the first one. Um, and the mechanics oh, okay. are a lot more, um, uh, I, I guess, like intuitive. Well, yeah, just more finely tuned to the point where they feel better. Like the pairing okay. is more like when I push the button, it does what I'm expecting it to do when I'm expecting to do it, I guess, is the best way I can put it. Same with the dodge. You do like your parrying mechanics. Parry, I know that uh, much. It's just so fun. Parrying makes me feel like uh, like I'm an actual, I don't know, warrior of some sort. Like I, <laughs> it, it makes me feel like at least my hands are doing good work. Like that's what make, those are my favorite kind of battles because they make they're the most reactive, and it's almost like mm-hmm. when you think about if so let's take it back to Mario Super Mario RPG where when you hit the button at just the right point when the you're like jumping yes. on them yeah those timed hits are my favorite kind and even in RPGs that's why what I liked about costume quests as well so yeah just timing things correctly I guess just having a rhythm to anything having that that steady beat of things is is just really satisfying when it comes to any kind of combat for me. I wish more RPGs used those timed hit mechanics because that was one of my favorite parts about Mario RPG because then it, it just made um, what, what sometimes grates on me for RPGs like JRPGs because like, you know, there is a an aspect of grindiness to those kind of games and um sometimes that that kind of grates on me just because it's like oh man it's gonna be such a time suck because i can't fight this boss until i level up a little bit yeah Um, and but that kind of makes it like going through and and having to fight those things it gives more of an interesting feel because it's just like you know i gotta time this right and then i can do more damage or like i gotta you know block um, and I got to time it right to block more of this uh, damage incoming and stuff. And it gives it, it just makes it more fun. It makes it feel more um, satisfying. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. And then it, you don't mind it. Like that's right. like, that's why it's one of my favorite games of all time. Cause it's just like made every aspect of that game enjoyable. If someone knows like, any games that are similar to that in yeah, uh, mechanically? Know. Yeah, let us know because I only know of Costume Quest and Super Mario RPG, yeah. but I'm sure there's a ton inspired by probably Super Mario RPG, to be honest. Um, sure. That is a much more fun system as far as uh, battling goes because I, like, to your point, it's, if you, if we take it to any really other regular turn-based uh, JRPGs, and I'm not saying I dislike them, it's just I get your point where after you're going through a string of battles or random encounters or whatever, like every five steps and a random encounter hits and you got to wait for the enemy to react, then you to do something, then enemy, then you, and there's nothing yeah. in between. You're not able to react to anything they're doing. You just have to take it like, oh, here's his critical hit that I'm just accepting. Like, here, give it to me. Let me embrace this. Instead of being able to like, okay, let me deflect part of it if I time it just right. Like, that's really satisfying because it gives you more to do during those battles instead of just kind of sitting and waiting yeah especially like during those big boss battles too oh because yeah. then then those become so much more crucial where like some of those could make or break the battle if you don't time it just right like i think about like um in mario rpg specifically if you're going up against like um was it kulix or Kulix, um he's like the the hidden boss uh oh, okay. in that game and he's I like fought him yeah, he's like one of the hardest bosses, I think, out of like any game I think I've ever seen, <laughs> like any RPG. Like, good Lord, he is difficult because he's just got so much health and he has so many um, attacks. Like, yeah, he's he's crazy. If you don't, you know, defend just right or or get as much damage on him as you can, it's just like, oh, man, you're probably going to get screwed. So I'm trying. Yeah, I'm, tr- I'm trying to look it up right now because I know not that one specifically, but I know there's like a boss in Final Fantasy 10 that takes like hours to beat or something or can take hours. And it's a hidden boss or a secret boss or whatever. So you don't have to fight him. But that just wh- when you were saying that, it reminded me of him. And I'm like, man, that is just like you have to be at like 999 everything basically to take on this boss. And it's like, right. I don't know that I'd ever have the patience to try that, but I respect anyone who can and who does like, that's really like a great achievement. If you're able to do that, there's really a way to kind of capsize the game. Like I've done everything I can in this game and here's a cherry on top. Let me beat this crazy boss. What's fun about that too, is like, um, one, not only is he a hidden boss in the game, 
but he is way more like a Final Fantasy style boss instead of like a Mario boss. Like he he doesn't fit in with the Mario world. <laughs> yeah, so he's like a one winged angel god. That's <laughs> he's got two wings. Oh, okay. so I can tell you that. But he's like <laughs> he's like from what I remember, he's like this big purple dude with like purple lightning coming off of him. And like his bottom half is like, I think it's like a cloud and he's got these big wings coming off of him. And he's got like these four crystals that surround him. And each crystal does like a different kind of damage, like fire damage, ice damage, um, lightning. Uh, I don't remember what the other one does. I don't know. Maybe it's water or something. Anyway, it's just like, it's it's pretty ridiculous. It doesn't fit in with anything else in that game, but that's, that's what cool, makes though. it fun. Uh, yeah, I yeah. like that. Were you, you said you were able to beat him? Yeah, I beat Dang. him. Yeah, nice. it, I, it took me like, because I remember as a kid, like it took me, I don't know how many tries. Like I wouldn't even be able to count that high. I probably couldn't even count that high as a kid when I fought <laughs> against him. So it, it took a very long time. I can tell you Man. that much. Uh, I, I really want to play through that game again. Maybe we can do a Let's Play of that specifically. I would I just, love to. Like, I would love I would to just love watch to. you do it even Cause since you probably remember at least some things about it, like I would have to go in yeah. fresh. So yeah, that'd be I really fun. Love it. Love it. Love it. Um, I was going to say, I, I got to watch, uh, I'm not going to spoil anything for you, but I did get Please to don't. watch, um, our friend Lime reversed finished tears of the kingdom oh. the other day. Um, and I gotta say just, uh, the, the, fi- the final battle. Woo. That's cool. It, it's pretty cool, man. Did he, did he have a mech with the giant flaming erection? He, he did not. <laughs> okay, good, good. Kudos to him. Yeah, he he uh he went in with nothing and uh like I say, man, it was it was a close call. It took him a few tries, but um it and I think maybe part of it is just how the battle is designed. Well, I would say part of it is how the battle is designed, but man, it feels down to the wire for sure, um, towards the end. Like, y- y- it, it, it feels like you're really not going to pull through when, when things go down. So it, it's that's, great. That's cool. I like that. Like, I appreciate difficulty in bosses, of course. But, you know, I have a question for you then related to that. Sure. Because it, video game related also, obviously, but I was thinking about this a lot the other day. I don't know, like how extensive should a final boss battle be? Because really, are you going through this game to fight the final boss or are you going through, is the journey the more enjoyable part? Like, I don't know that I have ever hit a final boss where I've been like, ah, now I'm completely satisfied. I'm done with the game and I never need to play it again. Like I'm, yeah. I'm myself personally, I'm enjoying the adventure more. So that's why it's hard for me to want to go to the end because I don't want it to finish yet. So that's like what I guess to you, what is a good like way to capsize a game or just to 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 cap off a game to finish it? And uh, I don't know, like, I guess my question is more like, are you more about the journey? Or are you trying to finish the game? And so the the final boss really matters that much. No, I'm way more of a journey person, which is why I have a lot of unbeaten games. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like, like, especially like older ones. Like, I never even beat uh, Breath of the Wild because um, I just really enjoyed like doing, doing it. Doing all just, the other stuff. Yeah, yeah, I couldn't bring myself to like actually beat it because I'm just like, I had more fun exploring, you know, mm-hmm. like doing all the shrines. And honestly, like, um, I'm just like parkouring around the world. It, it, like, <laughs> that was like what I did for the most part is just doing yeah. that stuff. And then I get, and part of that I think is because of my ADHD is just, I get so easily distracted that um, I will be on my way to do something like, okay, I'm, I'm going to go do this dungeon now because it's time. And then I'm on <laughs> and the way there. And then ask I ask for help or something. Yeah. Or I, I just see something that I'm like, oh, that Ooh, looks interesting. Yeah. yeah. It's like something off in the distance. And I'm like, I don't know if I've, explored that yet and then i go over there and then i never make it to <laughs> the dungeon or whatever i did the same <laughs> thing with fallout 4 which um i love fallout 4 it's like also one of my favorite games um but never beat it like i mean i got like almost a, a, like i'm pretty much at the end in my game but i just never completed it 
because it just like I love exploring the world and like there's so many people and things to do and like random monsters and stuff. And I'm just like, yeah, I, I that's more fun for me. I, I just yeah. like existing in the world. I'm more of like I, I like being immersed. And then yeah, exactly. My immersion then reflects my real life where I, I just get ADHD just like I do <laughs> in my everyday life. And I can't. I like I'll never be the end game boss in in life. Right. So. If if I if I imagine myself having to walk to work and there were multiple quests on the way, I don't think I'd ever yeah. make it to work. Nope. <laughs> I would never have a paycheck. Yeah. I would never make it. <laughs> I would no. just pick up whatever whatever uh whatever kind of credits I could from quests that I can do along the way. Be yeah. living quest to quest. Um but I think like it's hard for me to imagine a final boss it would be like a really great way to, I don't know, test every single thing that you've learned along the way in a game. Or there are some bosses where it's like, okay, like I've, you know, I've leveled my character up to be really good at stunning, but then the final boss is like immune to stuns. I was like, oh, well, cool. Like now I <laughs> I have to respec just to fight this boss or something, you know? Yeah. And so it's like it, the final bosses are like an afterthought to me. And a lot of times if a game lets me, I'll just beat the final boss and then just continue playing the game afterwards. It's like here, now the boss is defeated, but it'll save you. It'll make a save point right before the boss. Then it's like, okay, now you can go do all the other stuff you wanted to do. It's like, okay, cool. So the boss is checked checked off my list. I can go do what I really want to do, which is explore the rest of this world, find hidden stuff, find secret bosses and things like that. So final bosses, yeah. not a big deal to me. Do you have any like memorable final bosses that you, um, I mean, not necessarily final bosses that you love, but just ones that, that really stick in your mind of just like, man, that was a really pleasurable experience. And, and when I say the word pleasurable now, that feels pretty dirty. <laughs> so I wish I had chosen a different word and now it's too late. So. Well, yeah, I mean, since I always game in the nude, um, <laughs> I'm <laughs> you always too, ready. Huh? Yeah, of course. Who doesn't? Um, no, I, it, that's, that's tough. I guess I wouldn't say a final boss, but, um, if I'm talking about like Elden Ring, which is probably the games I've, the game I've sunk the most hours into recently or more recently anyway it's like the the elden beast the final final boss was was cool and all but it was the um oh gosh what was her name melania that's what it was melania yeah, okay. so i i even though i beat the final boss like that was fine like it was cool and all but but melania was what felt like a real final boss like she's the hardest boss in the game and maybe one of the hardest bosses in any souls like game i've ever played so that was a really satisfying victory and you know it's it's a little anticlimactic i guess depending on how you look at it because it's like okay now i have her you know weapon and or armor or whatever and then it's like, okay, cool. Well, now what do I do? I've beaten the hardest boss in the game. Where do I go from here? Yeah. And that's one of the parts where it's like, once you hit that peak, the only thing you can really do is like start over fresh or do like a new game plus or something. It's like, all right, I'm coming back in for round two. Yeah. But are, are there any like memorable bosses for you you can think of? Um, like final bosses? The the first one that stands out to me that I can think of, and I think it was more of the, the guy's aesthetic versus like the actual fight which is jack of blades from fable i just thought he's just such a cool villain um i i i don't know i think they built him up really well like he just appears a lot throughout the game kind of taunts you um had a real cool menacing look they built up this cool kind of lore about him and then if i remember right in the original game you uh, you fight him and it's kind of a one and done thing. But I think when they released Lost Chapters, which was just kind of like, if I remember right, the studio got, they, they were like forced to push out Fable and there was more that they wanted to do and didn't get the chance to do it. So then they pushed out Fable Lost Chapters and that was just like, okay, now we get to push out the game that we really wanted to do, which was there was like another zone. Jack of Blades had another form. And that that was memorable because it was just like he turned into this huge dragon after you defeat like his human form thing. And, you know, you find out, you know, really what he's about is um, 
he was more of like this chaotic being from another like reality that was just posing as as human and stuff so it makes a lot more sense for him to be the bad guy of this kind of story and everything and um it, it's cool it was really cool that's something that is like a requirement for a final boss you have to a have at least form. at least a second form sometimes a third like a surprise third form um yes it's it's not going to really be a spoiler to say that like in the Castlevania uh, expansion for Dead Cells, after you beat Dracula, like expect more Dracula. Like there's there's another yeah. form, of course. Like, but it's like that's the the first form is just like the warm up, and the second form is sometimes like twice as hard, if not more. So never feel great about beating a boss, it, beating the boss's first form because you know there's going to be a second. You just wait for it. Even if it looks like there's not, like you cut his head off, it's all good. His head's going to come to life, grow wings and like become gigantic or something. Like, don't worry about it. I mean, that's classic Zelda too. Like, you know, Ganon always turns into, or Ganondorf always becomes like, you know, the Ganon Yeah, the form. pig Ganon. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or something. So, you know, or, it, it happens Warthog every game. Ganon. Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of like Jack of Blades, though, this is ADHD just at its best. Like yeah, that made me think sure. of like how much I appreciate, uh, I don't know, card based aesthetics to things yeah. like like um, how do I say like Royal Flesh Gang or whatever in Batman. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, I yeah. like when they have that kind of theme to them. I don't know what it is about that, but it's the same reason I like, you know, jesters or. Um, that kind of carnival aesthetic in in uh, characters of, in whatever game I'm playing. It's why I was starting to like turn Jack in the D and D game we were playing into like uh, a juggler kind of thing. Like I wanted oh, to kind of yeah. push him towards that. If I remember right, the lore of uh, Fable has quite a bit. Of, like there was other um, characters along with him. Like um, there was like a, a queen and a king and stuff. That I think that's just part of the lore, and they they are characters you never really interact with or run into, but um, he's just the only one you end up fighting against. Or, or maybe he killed them and took their power, I don't know. But there was like almost like a, a little pantheon that came over from this other realm. And yeah, it was kind of like card-based. Like, you know, there's the king, the queen, there was Jack, a blade. Yeah. Um, and I just, I that stuck with me too. I, I thought that was kind of cool. So that feels yeah, like, I'm with you. I'm with you on the yeah. themes. It feels like an anime trope a little bit where, yeah, where it's like, I have to hunt down these, I don't know, five bosses and they're going to each be like a suit from the cards or from cards or something. <laughs> like there's going to be the king, there's right. going to be the queen, uh, the ace, the jack, um, and whatever. Maybe there's a, a, or just like the symbols, maybe like a club, uh, sure, you know, spade, whatever the symbols are, <laughs> hearts. Speaking of cards, so uh, you, you know that I'd been playing a lot of Wild Frost. And yeah, I, yeah. I finally got to the end boss. And go? I was just not great. No. Not great. <laughs> so, <laughs> you were so like, close. I, I know. Well, and here's the thing. We talk about, you know, bosses always have a final form. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. I, so I wiped out that first form, Liggity Split, like easy. Took him out, no problem. So you were feeling really good. I was feeling real good. And what the hell? He comes back with, okay, everyone who has not played Wild Frost, I need you un to understand this. These bosses, at most, typically have um, somewhere between 20 to 40 hit points. Okay. Um, sometimes they'll have some shields on them that means you got to hit them more. Uh, there, there's one that has like 60 hit points. But you get it. Double digit hit points. I, I defeat this guy. His second form, he shows up with 999 hit points. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what? And then he wipes the floor with me after I did. I was like, come on. <laughs> oh. yeah. And I, and I was so close. We did stream that the other day. And as yeah, you did. saw, like I made it to the last boss again because I had beaten that boss. But then... The problem is the next time you get to the boss, I guess from then on, the boss becomes the team that you beat the previous boss with. So yeah. my team had been so good that when I got to them again, like when I got to my own team and had to fight them, they wiped the floor with me. Like I might have lasted two rounds 
And they just crushed me. And I was like, well, I get it. You know, I built that other team really well, or he got lucky with the RNG, but man. So even after you beat the boss, you're just fighting yourself from that point on, which is crazy. Oh, man. Yeah, I was so sad. I was so disheartened after that. (laughs) I was like, man, no wonder this game keeps getting such bad reviews. It's so mean. It's very hard. (laughs) Like for the cute aesthetic that it has, like that's very misleading. I just I think that's fascinating, too. Um, And we were talking about this when we streamed it on Twitch, is that it is such a fun, addicting um, game, but it has so many bad reviews just because of the difficulty. I, you know, I get that to some degree. And there's like, uh, especially in like a game where there's a lot of like RNG draws and stuff in it where it's like, well, you're kind of victim to whatever the game decides to give you as options. Like maybe they'll work with your deck or maybe you'll get something that completely doesn't. And then you're like, well, yeah. what do I do now? Um, so you can just have like a completely like bad hand the whole or bad deck the whole game and then that's going to suck. But it's like I I feel like more so than other card games I've played, this one is just really can turn on you so fast. Even if you feel like you're doing well, something can happen and then a stupid Yeti can hit you for like seven points of damage from across the field and just destroy your entire plan. So it's like, I think more balance needs to be done in this game. And I don't think it's one of those that's like, get good. I think there's legitimacy (laughs) to all of those complaints about the difficulty because it is like more difficult than any other um, probably roguelike card game I've ever played. Only in the sense that it's very punishing for, and you don't have a lot of control over like avoiding that punishment. It's just like you go in and just get ready to get your butt kicked a few times, if not, you know, tens of times or whatever. Yeah, I I guess that 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 I can understand because you can go in with even if you go in with a good hand and a, you know, worked out strategy, depending on how certain things go, depending on like um, the the cards that pop up in your hand that you can pull from, which is a randomized aspect. Right. So like, I mean, you've got cards in your deck, which are mostly for you, like as you progress, you add certain cards to your deck. So you have like a minute bit of control over that. But during the battle, obviously, you don't have control over what ends up in your hand. If you don't get um, a good smattering of cards in your hand, even if you have the best strategy and you know, good characters to battle with, you could just get annihilated. And that feels pretty bad. So, yeah, and I think it's a lot of it is the attacks that the enemies have just feel really so overpowered. Oh, yeah. yeah. I feel really OP sometimes because they're like, OK, you can you all you got to do is like kill all these minions and then you can fight this little boss dude who's right in the middle of them. But if you don't in three turns, he's going to attack you five times for like 20 plus damage and kill every yeah. single one of your units. It's like, OK, great. Like, how, how do I avoid this? And that's not well, an exaggeration. You hitting, no, you have There's to keep a specific hitting him. boss that does that. The intended way to go about it is you're supposed to continue hitting the boss, which adds these like bonus damage to future hits you're going to do. Then you have to be careful because the, those that bonus damage also applies to the minions he has, so they can just right. kick your butt. So it's a there's a delicate balance you have to find, and in a game where there's a lot of randomness to it, like keeping that delicate balance that the game intends for you to keep is probably overly difficult. So it feels like this should be maybe the expert or hard mode of the game, and there should be like a more toned down normal version and. Uh, not and that's not even and I love difficult games, so I'm not speaking like oh I want this to be easy. I just want it to be more fair, and I don't I don't know that it is right now. Even though I enjoy the game and I still have thrown hours into it, I really feel like there's a lot of balancing that needs to be done on the uh, opiness of the <laughs> penis the of the <laughs> how overpowered. You said it. The, the enemies are. I figured you were going to jump in if I didn't. <laughs> you know what? It went right over my head somehow. And I got to say, I love you for pointing that out. Uh, to maybe me. you've rubbed off on me. Uh, 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 <laughs> <laughs> you did it again. Uh, oh, man. Yeah. So that's what you get with this show. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I appreciate you right now. All right. 
to contrast that, because you love these super difficult games, what is probably the most? Because you get on you get on me for this all the time about uh-huh. how I I uh, every once in a while I I play difficult games, you know, like this. But I also love super casual games um, that aren't difficult whatsoever. Just because I like immersing myself in in uh, myself. Oh my gosh, all my personalities, <laughs> your multiple selves. Uh, all, yeah, uh, um, in stories and stuff like that. So I want to know from you, like, what is probably the most casual, relaxed game that you've enjoyed yourself? Huh. I the first thing that comes to mind is that um, oh, what is the name of it? That one we both really enjoyed, the something pines, Beacon Pines, Beacon Pines. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because that, I would say, yeah, that's really more of a point and click kind of thing, or if not point and click, then at least just like a casual walk it's around, like a visual novel, visual novel kind of thing. Yeah, mystery that you're solving. And I enjoyed that one because I was able to get really immersed in the story, and I really loved the artwork, which also helped a lot for me. Um, sure. Yeah. So that one is a, a sharp contrast to games that I normally play, but it was really well written. It was very interesting, surprising at times. Like I was unable to predict like what was going to happen, which was nice. And uh, yeah, I really appreciated that game. Yeah, I really enjoyed that one, too. Uh, I was going to say, those are usually, um, I wouldn't say those are the games I play all the time, but uh, those are more akin to the ones I enjoy the most are, are games like that where I can just really live out a story. Um, I just, I usually prefer them with a lot more puzzle solving and things like that. Like um, I've talked about Case of the Golden Idol. And even though there's not as much story to them, I love anything pretty much from Rusty Lake, like any of the Rusty Lake series stuff or Cube Escape. That stuff's pretty fun. I like those, which are those always have that overarching, like sinister kind of horror esque tinge to it, which are which are fun. So, yeah. I like so those. I guess it's kind of like if you're more in the mood for an interesting story and you're not looking so much for. Like reactive, challenging gameplay, then there are some really good go-to games for that. It's not so much my wheelhouse, so I couldn't really name a bunch, but I know yeah. there's a lot more out there that are that will probably affect me the way that Beacon Pines did and give me a more casual, yet still enjoyable experience. Something like Pokemon Snap is probably up there too. You know, oh, yeah, like you it's... know what? Well, yes and no. Pokemon Snap, yes, for the most part, if you're going through just chilling, but if you're really trying to get that perfect shot, it gets intense (laughs) because you're like, I need to throw this Pokeball and peg the student ahead just right or else I'm going to miss my shot. And then when they give you like a D on a shot that you thought was uh, like an S, (laughs) it's very upsetting (laughs) because you're like, no, that that was my one chance. That new one feels so judgy. Like, oh, yeah. The, the old one felt so easy and the new one feels so judgy. I was going to say, it felt real stressful. Yeah. I was way more shot. stressed than last the last one. Playing yeah. That. This one, like, it's fun, but man, like, if, if, if the Bulbasaur isn't, like, smiling just right or he happens to blink during your shot, there goes your good score. Like, sorry. Right. Like, you suck. You're not a good photographer. Yeah. Please quit. Hang it up, Todd. You piece yeah. of crap. <laughs> you yeah. piece of garbage. Go back to school. So, you know, I guess that that's a good point, though, to bring up, which is it's a casual game on the surface, but there's a lot more there's layers to it if you choose to, uh, I guess, get into those, which sure. I think is maybe what the best games really should have. And I think that's a great way to balance things without like there being a difficulty setting is like, yeah, you can enjoy it just as a casual player and you can have fun. You can play through the game or if you want an extra challenge, you can do all these things and check all these yeah. things off your box and unlock you know, a few extra things by getting some, I don't know, like taking a slightly more difficult path. So I I like that about it. Uh, A similar game to Pokemon Snap that is not really difficult at all, but it's just fun is Paparazzi. Have have you ever seen Paparazzi? No. Yeah, the, the name sounds familiar, but I haven't played it. I streamed it once a long time ago, and it's basically, I want to say that you, you, uh, you're a person that goes around taking photos, but you aren't a person, you are a camera with legs and arms oh. that <laughs> you, you go around this place just inhabited by by dogs okay that's just the dogs paparazzi everywhere. part got it yeah 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 uh and you just just like pokemon snap um you, you just take pictures of dogs 
but and the dogs are always doing like goofy things uh and you have like certain tasks of finding like you know one place might be like uh get a good picture of a dog in a hat and um instead of like one person giving you ratings you're posting these to social media and so it's like lots of people commenting on it and stuff <laughs> and it's just it's a super cute just fun relaxing kind of game and uh there's just a lot of fun goofy little things in there like there's this the one thing i'll never forget was like i went to this one level and i found this one dog that was just skateboarding a bunch and his name was bony hawk and i just (laughs) (laughs) that was just cracking me up it was just this dog who is just like statically on the skateboard. You know, the dog's legs aren't moving. He's just on the skateboard, but the skateboard's like, you know, ramping up the half pipe, going back and forth and like doing all these flips in the air, like spinning around. And it's just absurdly goofy looking. And and that's like the charm of the game. I think that's yeah. that's what made it fun is the game's incredibly charming. Uh, so yeah, I loved every second of playing that game. Amazing. Yeah, I yeah. love that. Yeah, I play on words like that are great. I mean, because we do that stuff all the time. That's oh, what we do with that, that stupid Disney thing that we were talking about oh, yeah. in like the first episode. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's just, I don't know. That's just what's funny to us. So that totally works. That reminds me. So something that I wanted to bring up uh, on on an episode is you asked me, I think a couple of weeks ago now, you, you came up with this idea because we're always like, one of our goals that we've always wanted to do is to, we want to create a game ourselves. Not like, I mean, I'd love to do a video game, but we've talked about making a TTRPG, which which I've got some ideas. I've got some bones right now, but you also came up with this idea for a deck builder um, card game. Yeah. Of, you were like, we probably can't get the rights for anything, but what if, you know, we did like kind of like parody of, you know, 90s cartoon characters and did like a um, a thing like that. And I loved that idea. And I was just like, I wonder like what characters we could do and how we would change them just enough so that we wouldn't get in trouble doing it. <laughs> yeah, I think it's very possible. And honestly, like I have a friend who like successfully kickstarted a card game. Yeah, we were recently. talking about that. Uh, I yeah. think it was last episode we, okay, we talked yeah. about it. And so, so it did reach its uh, goal? It did reach its goal. It exceeded it, which is fantastic. Great. And now it's in the process of being created, which is very inspirational. So that yep. that just really kind of encourages me more to actually kind of do the thing we've been talking about in that's, that's more achievable for us um, since we can't, like making a video game like that would be, you know, that would take potentially like years to actually get developed. Sure. Uh, making a TTRPG, like totally possible. We just don't have it all like worked out yet. That's something we can develop over time. Making a card game. I play so many card games and we just have so much collected knowledge, especially after years of doing Cartoon Boom of cartoons. That yeah. I think we could make something really fun and kind of a, a silly homage to cartoons of the 90s that we've seen and like you said make characters that are similar to but not quite the characters that people know so they can look at it and be like i know who they're you know parodying here. yeah exactly and i appreciate that um I, I feel like so what what would be the ultimate um what would be the goal of the deck builder game like what would be the goal of the game do you think it's gotta be like it depends, really, because we can go two different ways with it. We can make it like a competitive co-op game. We can okay. make it e- okay. We can make it either a co-op deck building game, a competitive okay. co-op game, like uh, the DC deck building game originally was, where it's like you're all heroes fighting villains, but it's essentially like whoever is able to actually work up the deck to kill these villains, or you know, not kill them, knock them out, I guess, in that sense and capture their card is like, you're going to have more, the most points at the end for people who like that kind of competition. I'm more of a co-op player. So I would, maybe we can have multiple. I've got an idea. I've got an idea. So what if this, this is like, uh, we lean real heavily into like, this is the idea of like these nineties cartoon characters 
come to life? What if we lean into the idea of that more? And it's like, it, it is a competitive co-op thing where you do have to work together to defeat the, the villains or whatever. But, um, the points you collect at the end are your characters, like, TV, it's your ratings. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking just now. Yeah, you, <laughs> so yeah, like yeah. Who who gets the highest ratings? Like the most yeah. popular cartoon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like so, it's kind of a meta sort of thing. Yeah, I like that idea a lot. I think that would be pretty funny. That would be really fun. Yeah. So l- let's like obviously we can't come up with them all right now, but let's but go. We up need with some, some archetypes. Characters. Yeah, yeah. Some characters like we need. Um, and, and I feel like. I don't know if we could always, we could do like necessarily teams. We might be able to come up with something like that. But like, I almost feel like, you know, if we were doing like, um, okay, well, how do we do the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? We'd have to do like one character that's like an amalgamation or something like that of like all four of them. And then it'd have to be probably a different animal or something. But, um, you know, yeah. it, like we, we'd have to have some sort of um, martial arts, um, you know, animal anthropomorphic animal um, yeah like like a samurai um i mean samurai pizza cats already did that yeah. part but uh well, i like i like the idea of samurai samurai but like what if we could do either I, I, i'm playing with the word samurai or ronin and now i'm trying to think of what is an animal that you know, starts with ronin, either an s or an r i think ronin would work well just because it's like no master kind of thing. And sure. It could be just a single character anyway. Okay. So what what's an animal that starts with like an R? Because I like the, I, I think that would sound good. Uh, rats. <laughs> rats <laughs> <with> an R. <laughs> Ronin rat. Yeah. Uh, um, yeah. There's rats. There's rhinos. There's oh, robins. Rhino, rhino would be cool. Um, but it would also need, we need to throw the age in there. Like instead of teenage. Yeah. What if he's middle aged or something? Yeah, or middle aged. Or wait, what if? Hang on, what if we went with like preteen something, <laughs> like a kid, like a little kid yeah, like, Ronin? Okay, yeah, preteen Ronin, like Rhino needs, or something. It needs like it needs one more thing in between that, like the mutant yeah. part. Uh, yeah, like preteen mutated Ronin rhinos. I feel like we, I feel like we couldn't use mutant. Though. Okay, not mutant. Because um, because that's already in Ninja Turtles. Um, anthropomorphic. Um, I'm gonna pull up a thesaurus because <laughs> I want to. I want to know like what are some other words for like mutant or mutated. And, uh, like, while you're doing that, like, freak I, I is seeing... another. One. <laughs> God, oh, freak. freak, weirdo, monstrosity. Maybe oh, maybe um, maybe like freakish preteen Ronin Rhino. God, it sounds, sounds awful horrible. though. Yeah, it <laughs> but, sounds bad. We might have to go back to the drawing board. On that yeah, one. that sounds like more of a garbage pail kids kind of thing. Yeah. Um, um, what about okay? Let's think of a different character than something simpler. Uh, yeah, I was thinking Din for the Last Dinosaur. We can play okay. off that easily. Just name another city in Colorado, like Boulder. Uh, yeah, but yeah, Boulder the Boulder the first. Boulder, yeah, <laughs> or just the only Boulder, the only dinosaur, or Boulder, the only Boulder, um, the only. Um, I- instead of dinosaur, I'd like I feel like it'd have to be. What are some like mammals from like? Um, hang on, I want to find out. We like don't even have sick woolly of mammoth or anything. Oh my god, mammoth. Okay, so what if we go with an M? Uh, what's an a city that starts with like an M? Uh, like Madison. I'm so bad. Oh yeah, Madison the Madison the the final mammoth. Madison the <laughs> Madison the final mammoth. <laughs> Madison the only ma- mammoth. Madison the only mammoth. I think that that's fun. Yeah, it's just a big anthropomorphic mammoth that plays. Um, but he also has sunglasses on. Yeah, he's got and sunglasses. He, and s- Instead of the keytar, he's got to have something uh, like a saxophone, maybe. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, which saxophone. is which is hilarious because especially with ma- the trunk, yeah, because he doesn't have <laughs> fingers. So, <laughs> <laughs> mammoth the only, yeah, Madison the only mammoth. That's yeah, great. I like that. That's pretty good. I uh, like that one. Uh, 
Um, I was trying to think of like like something akin to street sharks, but I was trying to think of something I could use with piranhas. Highway like piranhas. A- <laughs> <laughs> highway piranhas. That that sounds or, funny. Or or, or like even or even eels. Like um, <laughs> but like I, eels. I, I, yeah, it's got to be some overpass eel. <laughs> that that's pretty good. Overpass eel. Or maybe like maybe something with the sidewalk. Like they're more responsible. They're not street sharks. They're sidewalk something. Okay, yeah. Like sidewalk sturgeon. Yeah. That sturgeon was my first thought too. And I was like, is yeah. that too complicated? No, I, I like that pretty good. Sidewalk sturgeon. Sidewalk sturgeons. sturgeons. Yeah. Okay. I like that. That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> I, I'm hoping that people sturgeons will to this have will, teeth, right? You know what? I don't know enough about sturgeons to say for sure. They probably don't. <laughs> <laughs> They're probably just a dumb Are pit. sturgeons like bottom feeders or something? I, they might be. Oh, sturgeons can get huge though. Whoa, I'm looking up sturgeons right now. Th- so that that actually might be pretty cool. Sidewalk sturgeons, pretty cool. Um, They don't have teeth. They have, their mouths are like vacuum cleaners. <laughs> that, that might make it even but funnier. That, yeah, that yeah. makes it even better because they could just <laughs> suck up whatever they want. Yeah, that's, that's their they, catchphrase. Oh, you like, suck. I'm keeping the, I'm keeping these sidewalks clean of crime. <laughs> yeah. and, but, I'm sucking up like, crime. <laughs> sucking up crime. <laughs> yeah, it's just a, a scene of them just like literally sucking crime off of the sidewalks. Yeah. Okay, uh, here's, here's a good one for you. So um, if we were going to do a play off of um, like Toxie or something like that, like what would you what it would it be? Would it be just like trashy or, or something? Or chem- like uh, chemically, uh, or maybe trashy could work. Yeah, <laughs> it's just trashy. <laughs> it's just a. Yeah. It's just Actually, a that might be even garbage. funnier. <laughs> a pile of garbage, but with like some of the same kind of outfit that <laughs> Toxie wears, like a yeah. bandana and like a a mop or something. Something that's like a nod, but it's literally just a pile of garbage. <laughs> trashy. Yeah. <laughs> What's another word for crusader? Uh, trashy. Uh, I feel like we can't use Avenger either just because of the no, movies. No, because of Toxic Avenger. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe they took the best two warrior? words. Warrior? Trashy warrior. There's zealot, activist, champion. Trashy champion. Trashy champion. I like that. That yeah. sounds good. I like that. Trashy champion. That that makes me pretty happy. Trashy champion. Or wait, wait, would it need to? Know, so his name is Trashy, just like Toxie. But like, what would be the equivalent for like Toxic if for the title of it? You know what I mean? Um, would it just like be the like, Trash Crusader, or it, or, or, or would not it be trash, like uh, Garbage Champions? Garbage Champions. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah I like the Garbage Champions with Trashy as the leader. I like that. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Garbage champion. So it, we'd have to give them like individual names from, and it's like whatever show. So it'd be like Trashy from Garbage Champions. Oh, you know, yeah, as, yeah, is his perfect. show? Yeah, because yeah. they're like representatives of the show. Yeah, it's yeah. Great. So like our our Sturgeon dude would have to have a name. It'd be like something from like. Wait, what? What were some of the the Street Shark names? There was like Slamu. Uh, well, there is, Slamu was wasn't one of the main characters, though. Okay, uh, Str- Streaks was the one of the rollerblades. That's right. That was right. Uh, Ripster. I oh, know Slamu was the big uh, orange dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was an orca that was a later There's character. Hammerhead, though. I think, was Rips- one of them. Ripster was one of them. Okay, so like, I, I, I feel like we can't leave until we have a real good name for our main sturgeon. So, oh my God. The, hold on. I just have to say this real quick because it's funny. And I yeah. don't know if we mentioned it in our Street Sharks episode or not. But the Orca character's name yeah. is Moby Lick. <laughs> <laughs> I think you did. I think you did. Okay. Okay. And I, if I remember right, um, they like flip flop those names. Because I think the guy that was Big Slamu was supposed to be Moby Lick. And the Orca originally was going to be um, Big Slamu. Big Slamu. Maybe. Uh, maybe yeah. it was too close to Shamu. And so they're like, no, we can't risk it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, so, okay. So the main characters, let's just start there Jab, Ripster, Big Slamu, and Streaks. Okay. So, what is a good name for a Sturgeon? <laughs> 
I mean, we can just make it something simple. Like if we go with the jab one, like punch, punch the the sidewalk. I know. I, I was just trying to think because because what they do is all they do is they suck stuff up. So I was like, what uh-huh. if his name is sucks with an X? <laughs> <laughs> Okay, that's it. That's it. Then. <laughs> it's the X that does it for me. Yeah, yeah, because I was just like, that really feels super 90s to me. Yeah, it totally. <laughs> sucks. Yeah, I mean, streaks has an X in it. So yeah, that completely yeah. works. Sucks. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah, sucks from the sidewalk sturgeons. Yeah, okay. Oh, that's perfect. I feel like we really accomplished something here. Yeah, um, this is already I'm loving this. You know, we'll obviously at some point we'll need to come up with some sort of robot, you know, an alien race robot sort of thing. We'll need um, some sort of like superhero-ish kind of thing. Are we um, exclusively sticking to the 90s cartoons? I would say we keep it as late 80s, early 90s as possible to keep because those those cartoons have a very similar vibe to them, you know? That's true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can I always feel like that's expand what we gotta... back into the 80s if this takes off or something. So we'll we'll stick with 90s for now. What if, okay, what if we stick with 90s and then there's like a DLC that's like 80s Invasion? Oh, yeah. Cause just because that sounds good. That does sound really good. <laughs> um, I like the sound. Then we'd have we'd have a lot to play with there too because there's so many 80s cartoons we love. Exactly. Oh man, I'm loving so this. So we'll if anybody, the 90s for now. Yeah, if anybody hearing this has any ideas, feel free to throw them our way so that we can steal yeah. them and use them in our card game. Exactly. Throw, and potentially throw, give you a special thanks. Yeah. yeah, we'll give you a special <laughs> thanks, but you're not going to get any money <laughs> at all. <laughs> but please give us ideas. For give free. us ideas. Yes. Oh man. All right. Well, um, you know what? Uh, Real quick, thank you to Lance Conrad for the use of our theme song, Rebels of Our Own Kind. As always, if you enjoyed the show, please let us know by throwing us a rating and writing a review wherever you're able to do so or share your favorite episodes and clips on social media. You can find us in all the things at Nerdsloth HQ or visit our website at nerdsloth.com where you can learn more about us and keep up to date with all the latest and greatest projects we're working on. There you can also find a link to our merch store and info about our active Discord community and our Patreon, where you'll find hundreds of hours of bonus content from all the various Nerd Sloth projects. That's it for us this week. My name's Chris. I'm Joseph. And, uh, man, we, we I never have anything for the... Uh, eat your vegetables. That, that's all I got. Eat, <laughs> eat your veggies. Probably, probably drink your milk, too. I think that's still up in the air, whether that does anything or not. But I think calcium is great for you. Yeah, drink your milk and... and and then regret your IBS. <laughs> Drink copious amounts of milk and then yeah. sit on the toilet for the rest of the day. And then sit day. on the toilet for a long time.